Hello, uh, this is Professor Han, and thank you very much for your interest in my class, Law and Economics. As you can imagine from the name Law and Economics, this is an area analyzing the legal system uh, from the economic point of view. Before explaining what Law and Economics is about, I want to briefly tell you how I am going to operate my class. My philosophy is the class should be something that cannot be more convenient than this kind of thing. So I will value the convenience of the student most in my class. Number one, the, all the classes would be recorded lectures and I will upload all 15 classes, 15 day classes at the beginning of the class. So you can take the class anytime you want, 24 hours a day. Theoretically, it is possible that you can take all my lectures on the first day. And that would be the end of the class. Of course, that would be very tiring. I don't want you to do that, but that's possible. Number two, the evaluations would be two assignments, which you can do anytime when you have a time. So, basically, I'm going to give you the assignment at the beginning of the semester. So, after taking the class, you can submit the assignment anytime before the deadline I set. One shortcoming of this kind of class would be there is hardly any Q&A sessions because we cannot meet face to face. Therefore, I will make a Q&A session online so you can when you are studying you are curious something you just write down and ask me question i'm going to check the q a session every day so within 24 hours hopefully much less than that i'll give you an answer for your question okay and if there's any other uh, suggestion from you that can improve my class i'm all ears so Basically, one thing I want to tell you about my law and economics class is there are forbidden words. And the forbidden words are something like justice, ethical, humane thing to do kind of thing. I mean, probably if you go to the law school, these are the criterion how to make uh, the judgment. If something is against justice, you should make the person guilty or something. But then economists are very special group of people who cannot do anything when the definition is very clear. As an economist, I do not know what's the definition of ethical thing, humane thing. Okay? It's not so clear. On the other hand, economists like some word like efficient, which is mathematically proven either efficient or inefficient. So, in law and economics, we are going to look at the law, not from the point of justice, ethics, from the point of view of efficiency. Okay? Would be fun. One example. Let's assume that post office made a mistake. So, misdelivered a letter sent by Mr. Kim. The problem is that letter was so important. So, the misdelivery caused $1 million loss to Mr. Smith. Wow, big loss. Of course, Mr. Smith would sue the post office and ask, you know, give me my $1 million. It is your mistake. I should get paid. If you are a judge, what would be your verdict? Are you going to make the post office pay $1 million to Mr. Smith? More than one million dollar, less than one million dollar. One assumption here I wrote down is there's no dispute that the mistake was 100% post office side. Mr. Smith didn't make any mistake. So post office was wrong, Mr. Smith was right. So if you are like ethics justice guy, the post office should pay each answer. But if you look at the efficiency, it's a little bit more 
uh, complicated. I mean, the key point here is the letter, important letter should be delivered for sure with the smallest cost. So from now on, what, who should be responsible if the post office has a lower cost to deliver the letter for sure, then post office should be responsible. If Mr. Smith can deliver the letter for sure, then Mr. Smith can, should be responsible from economics po point of view. What does that mean? Let's assume that the judge said post office is responsible. What would post office do from now on? They would think every letter they are dealing with, millions of letters every day, and potentially all these letters can be million dollar lawsuit. So if I'm the master of post office, I'm going to do the insurance for every letter for $1 million. Probably that would cost a fortune for the post office. And what post office would do is maybe until now it's $1 per letter. Now they charge $10, $20 per letter. So the cost would be on the consumers. But then, you know, there might be some important letters like worth $1 million, like Mr. Smith's letter. But most of letters, you wouldn't care whether they are really delivered or not. Okay? May value $1, $2 letters in there. But then the post office cannot tell which letter is important, which letter is not. So they have to regard every letter as a potential $1 million loss lawsuit, so the cost would be increased astronomically. On the other hand, Mr. Smith, when he knows that this letter is so important, potential $1 million loss, what can he do? He can send maybe 10 letters. It's unthinkable that post office make a mistake for 10 same letters. In addition to that, Mr. Smith can email it email his counterpart, or fax him, talk to him on the phone. So Mr. Smith, with fairly low cost, can make sure that that important message would be delivered. So from law and economics point of view, the post of, if post office get responsible for this, then the cost would increase enormously for our society. If the judge said Mr. Smith is responsible, Mr. Smith can solve this by sending 10 letters, fax, email, text mail, and by phone, talking the counterpart on the phone. So that can be solved with a relatively low cost. So the law income say the verdict should be the post office doesn't have to pay $1 million for Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith should be responsible. If you think uh, like this kind of this line of thinking, then law and economics is the thing for you. Hope to see you all in my class. Thank you.